Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be talking about the repair process for my Honda S2000. Uh, if you weren't aware, I drove it into the side of my garage and so I needed to get it fixed. I also had a chipped up front bumper so I had them repaint that while it was in. And you know, I'm going to talk about the good parts of this experience, the bad parts of this experience, and some of the shady parts of uh, getting your car fixed. Um, and so, you know, starting off, I do want to say though that the car looks amazing. It's honestly never looked this good. They did an amazing job with the repair itself. Uh, there were some other parts of it that were a bit shady, um, questionable in my opinion. Uh, and then the inside is also looking good. They did a real nice job of just cleaning up the entire car after they did uh, fix what needed to be fixed. Now first, I do want to thank this video's sponsor, Autotempest.com. Uh, if you're like me and you like searching for used cars, whether or not you actually plan on buying them, this is an awesome website that combines a bunch of different websites, search results uh, for local listings, so you can find um, from a bunch of different sources what cars are available in your region. Super cool website, I'll include a link in the video description and chat a little bit more about it at the end of the video. So let's get straight into it. How much did it cost? Well, ultimately it ended up being about $2,200, uh, which is quite a bit. Now keep in mind, this wasn't just repairing the fender. I had a chipped up front bumper, which I was going to have taken in uh, for sanding down and then repainting anyways. And then I you know, made sure that they blended the paint color from the fender onto the hood, onto the door, so that you know it, it's a nice even transition. You don't notice uh, the transition at all. Uh, so it looks like it matches perfectly. They did an amazing job matching the paint. Yes, $2,200 is a lot of money um, and there are some things that I think could have been a little bit cheaper about it, which I'll get into, uh, but ultimately I am very happy with what was done. The car looks absolutely amazing. It looks perfect as far as the paint matching, so I'm really impressed with how they did it. Now the first thing I did when I was going out to look uh, for a place to get repaired, I got two quotes. The first one was 2000 that was the place I ended up going with. The second place was $2,900, uh, and I decided against that because that seemed absurdly expensive. Now, some people have asked if I went through insurance for this. I didn't, and the reason why is because of the front bumper. So, you know, it's a $2,200 repair. My deductible, I think, is around $500, uh, but the front, uh, you know, that wasn't damaged by me running into anything. That was just damaged when I bought the car. So that would be insurance fraud if I were to have, you know, insurance cover fixing the fender and painting the front. So I just paid uh, out of pocket for all of it. Um, I think in the long run, if I had just gotten the fender uh, fixed, by through insurance uh, it wouldn't have really saved me much money once you add on you know how much it's going to increase uh, your monthly premiums on insurance uh, so I don't think it would have really been worth it um, and because I was also getting that front bumper repainted I did out of pocket for it so quite an expensive lesson learned uh, just for tapping the side of my garage as far as a breakdown of the actual cost I spent about $350 on parts I spent on labor about $800 for the body, about $600 for refinishing, um, and that includes the painting, and I spent $400 on material and paint. Um, seems like a lot, $400 for paint for, you know, two body parts, uh, but, you know, that's... That's, uh, I guess, what you get when you go to a quality shop. Again, I do really like the work that the shop did. I just think there are some questionable things on this quote. So going around and looking at the car, they did a fantastic job of blending. You don't notice any color differentiation between the fender and then getting onto the door. I also measured the gap here between the door and the fender. Uh, 5.3 millimeters on this side, 5.1 millimeters on the other side, so just two tenths of a millimeter of a difference in the panel gap once they got this one on, so basically a perfect match. Um, looking at the hood, nice blend over. You don't notice any color differentiation uh, between the hood and the fender. Good panel gaps uh, right here up front with the bumper itself where it attaches. I was a little concerned about what this would look like because I also did damage the front bumper a little bit on this edge right here and it looks you know, just like new. It looks the exact same on the other side so they did a really good job with that. Overall, extremely impressed uh, with how well they did fixing this. And of course, looking at the front bumper, um, you know, it's no longer super chewed up on the front from all the rock chips that it had previously. Uh, it looked quite bad on the old car and now it's looking fantastic. So I've got six weeks and then I'll be putting a clear bra over the entire car, uh, which should be pretty cool to do. 
Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about the bad part of this experience. Uh, the first thing that I didn't like is that they wanted to charge retail for this fender itself. Uh, it's a $400 part, but you can find it online for $280. And so, you know, that's direct from Honda. Um, I saw no reason to spend $400 when you can find it online the exact same thing for $280. I don't know why they can't just charge you that $280. So I decided to buy it myself and bring it to them. Now, the thing you want to know if you do end up bringing it yourself, you want to order it plenty early because if there is damage on it, you want to return it, get a better one in, and then bring it in. I didn't get mine in early, and so it had damage on it. Um, they had to end up fixing that damage, and you know, I still saved a little bit of money, uh, but it's, it's a silly thing to do. It, it saved me maybe like 50 bucks total after they went in and repaired some of the dents that came on the factory part. Um, so important that you order it early if you're going to do that. I really wish shops would just charge you what you know anybody can buy it for, uh, but that was one thing. The other thing, they charged me for installing the emblems, even though they didn't install the emblems. I told them not to, uh, so I'm not upset that they're not there. I didn't want them on because I'm putting the clear bra on, and I also haven't yet decided if I may go to black emblems. I don't really like chrome, uh, but either way, uh, charging me for something that they didn't do, I thought that was pretty silly. It was only like 20 bucks, so I didn't raise an issue over it, uh, but I, I don't think uh, that's super professional. And the final thing, they didn't realize uh, that this was a three-stage paint process rather than just a two-stage paint process. So the quote ended up going up about $250. Uh, I really wish, you know, from the beginning they would have known, hey, this is what your real quote's going to be. Uh, I don't like the fact that it went up $250 after I had already gone in, uh, gotten a quote, decided to go with them, uh, and then suddenly I'm spending $250 more than I was initially told. But again, overall, I'm extremely pleased with how this came out. Okay, so real quickly, let's check out this website, autotempest.com. Again, it lets you compare a bunch of different car websites all in one spot, which is pretty awesome, especially if you're like me and enjoy, you know, looking for used cars, whether or not you actually have any intentions of buying them. I think it's no secret that I love the Ford Shelby GT350. Uh, so we'll go ahead and see if there's anything. Put in 500 miles, put in your zip code. Um, I'm not really a fan of the GT500, so we'll put in 2016 for the model year. Uh, you can do manual transmission if you want. This is only a manual transmission vehicle, so it doesn't matter. Uh, but either way, you know, you can put in different criteria there. Go ahead and search, see what comes up. And so two listings, uh, actually both of them pretty close within about five miles. 2016 GT350 5200 with 20,000 miles on That's quite a bit of miles. I mean, this car looks beautiful in that blue, but... Uh, you know, these cars start new at like 56,000, so to spend 52,000 on one with 20,000 miles on it seems silly. Uh, you could probably get close to that price uh, if a dealer was willing to play nice with you. They also link out to matching results on Auto Trader and Craigslist to let you compare those. So pretty neat website, you can check it out. I'll have a link in the video description. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.